today we're on our 2008 Enterprise server and we're going to set up network address translation or NAT and a VPN server and client. Now network address translation allows you to take a, a public IP address, one single public IP, and share that among many private IP addresses and it also hides those private IP addresses from the public. So it can be both a security device and also a network sharing type of device. Um, VPNs, of course, allow you to create an encrypted tunnel to a host, um, or for a host to create an encrypted tunnel through the, an internet or broadband connection to a, a company server. There's several ways to get to what we need. In this case, I ha have a shortcut to the server manager on my desktop, but if you don't have one, you can go to Control Panel and Administrative Tools and then the server manager and I just have shortcuts on my desktop because I use these items frequently administrative tools and the server manager but in the server manager once it comes up you can you know install roles or set up new roles remove roles you can set up features or remove features um, you can modify group policy it's collecting data let's wait a few minutes here Okay. Open this. Notice here's the GPMC group policy management console. If I look at roles, here are the current roles my server is playing. So I am a domain controller with the five operations master roles, uh, DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol server, and I'm a DNS server so far. What I want to do is add a role, and I want to configure routing and remote access to enable both a NAT server and a VPN server. So I'm going to say add roles. and launch the wizard here. I'm going to click Next. And what I want to do is add Network Policy and Access Services. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to click Next. And the service, particular service that I want to configure is going to be a routing and remote access uh, server. So I'm going to go ahead and select that option. Click Next and I'll click Install. Now one of the things that we'll have to do is we'll have to modify whatever user accounts we want to dial in over the VPN. There's two ways to do that. You can either edit a network access policy um, and a, you know grant permission that way and then you can select in their user accounts that they get that permission from the network access policy or you can simply grant permission on their user account object in Active Directory users and computers. So we'll look at both ways of doing that and while it's installing I guess I can yak 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 a little bit about some of the features of uh, you know our our VPN server. Our VPN server uh, with 2008 will support three basic protocols. Um, the first one you'll see is SSTP, Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol, and it uses the SSL port, Secure Sockets Layer, port 443, to connect uh, you know a host machine uh, to a server through an encrypted tunnel. This is very useful because 443 is usually open on most firewalls because it, that's secure web traffic, HTTPS, or you know if you use SSL, um, a secure socket layer connection. The other two protocols that it supports, PPTP for older systems that you know may not support SSTP or LTTP, PPTP is point-to-point -point tunneling protocol and it uses MPPE uh, for encryption. And then of course the, your VPN server in 2008 will also support L2TP layer 2 tunneling protocol which uses IPSEC as a means of encryption and for security policies. We can configure different IPSEC policies. Now also one of the things you'll notice when we set up NAT is that it configures a firewall. Um, you basically you'll be able to select a, a public and private uh, interface and on the public interface it'll go ahead and configure a firewall. Okay, so now we've set up our routing and remote access server. Notice now under roles we have network policy and access. And let's go ahead and we have to enable routing and remote access here. Now that it's been installed and configured as a role, I'm going to right click and I'll say configure and enable routing and remote access. And this will give me the capability or access to setting up both a NAT server and a VPN server, or in our case both. Now notice the options here. I could choose to set up just a dial-in VPN server. 
Um, I could choose to set up just a NAT server, network address translation. Um, I want to do virtual VPN and NAT. We'll do both at the same time, try to kill two birds with one stone, stone so to speak. But also what this will do is anybody who dials into our server uh, and creates a, a VPN connection, through that encrypted tunnel, they'll be able to access via our NAT server um, the private network, the local area network. Even They'll even be able to access the internet through their connection to our server. Um, they already have access to the internet if they're making a connection over broadband, of course, so that's kind of a moot point, but just to show you what the combination of VPN and NAT would do. So let's go ahead and now we have two interfaces here for our VPN connection. Select the network interface that connects to the internet. In this case, where I have a number assigned via DHCP, this represents the address that I would get from my internet service provider. This is where I connect to the internet. So this is DHCP given to me by my ISP. This, on the other hand, is a static IP address. And that's where my DHCP server, my DNS server, all of those things are set up on that static IP, and in this case also my NAT and VPN server. So it's very important that you select the proper interface. And the reason is, is because the wizard's going to configure a firewall on that interface. So in this case, I want to select my DHCP interface. This connects me to the internet. That's where we'll place the firewall. Now, the next question in the wizard, how do you want IP addresses to be assigned to remote clients? Automatically or from a specified range of addresses? If you choose automatically, what you can do is configure a scope on your DHCP server to service those requests. And that's okay, but I'm going to choose this particular option from a specified range of addresses. And the reason is, is because it will reduce some traffic between my VPN uh, NAT server and my DHCP server. And what this does is it'll just pull from an internal database that you configure. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a scope here. And I'll set up 192.168.80.200. I want to make sure that it doesn't overlap or conflict with the range of IP addresses that my DHCP server is handing out, which stops at 100. And then 192.168. You can choose how many connections you want to allow. The maximum number of connections I'll allow is going to be, oh, let's say... 21. Of course, the last valid IP would be 254. The first fellow would be 1, but on my DHCP server, my scope is from 1 to 100, so I just want to make sure that these don't, you know, I don't want to create an IP conflict. So, okay, because I will be translating this traffic onto the network. And All right, we're going to go next. Now, this is asking me, um, do I want to set the server to work with a radius server? Now, I could configure a radius server, and what a radius server does is it allows you to tie together multiple VPN servers. Um, are routing the remote access servers and configure them all with a single you know remote access policy or a central remote access policy sort of like group policy we've been talking about group policy and we've experimented with it seeing how it works so you can set up group policy on a domain controller and it replicates out and controls security throughout the whole network well that's what radius does i can set up a remote access policy on a radius server and then i would configure all my routing and remote access servers to use that radius server um, as a you know a, a central remote access policy that would govern all of them, but in this case we'll create a standalone NAT or VPN server. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say finish. And we'll just click on OK for a message here. Get a nice little. Uh, clock animation here. Please wait or write in remote access services. Finishes initialization.